Today on Steel Creek Explorer, some science. Welcome back. When most of you think of the Nature Center at Steel Creek Park, this is probably what you think of. You might think of our open exhibits that are open seven days per week. Or you might think of our educational uh, opportunities such as uh, hikes and programs that we offer most of the time. What you may not know is that there are a number of other initiatives that the Nature Center takes part in. And a lot of times those activities happen uh, in the back of house areas. They don't always happen on public display. I often use the example of uh, three legs required to hold a stool upright. Well, at the Nature Center, the three pillars of our mission are education, conservation, and research. And so what the public sees on most days is the education that happens. That's our exhibits and our programs that we do. We don't always show what happens in our conservation and our research initiatives. So over the next few episodes, we're going to show you some of those other not often seen, but vitally important aspects of the Nature Center, the staff and our volunteers here. So today we're going to start with one of my favorites, research. Nature Center staff and our volunteers are engaged in a handful of different scientific projects. So I'm going to show you just one of those today, something I'm passionate about, Paleozoic Paleontology. Well, Nature Center staff and our volunteers are engaged in a number of research projects on all aspects of Southern Appalachian natural history. Birds, plants, whatever you can think of, we uh, probably are, are engaged in researching that in some capacity or another. But for anybody who knows me, you know that my real passion is paleontology, the study of past plants and animals. And so right here at the Nature Center, we're actively engaged in uh, searching for and describing fossils uh, from the Holocene and Pleistocene epochs of the Cenozoic era that we belong to. But also what I wanna show you today, we're engaged in looking at fossils and paleontology from far more ancient rocks, the rocks from in Steel Creek Park and the surrounding area. Those are from the Paleozoic era. And I'm gonna share with you some of what we're doing with these Paleozoic rocks in just a moment. Well, like any other great science experiment, the first steps begin where? In the library. And right now, I am in the Nature Center's Natural History Library. It's the Explorer's Library. And this is the place to start your research uh, on anything having to do with the natural history of the Southern Appalachians. We've introduced you before on this show to the scientific method and how it works. Before we can begin our experiments and start collecting our results, what do we have to do? Research our topic. Well, the project that I'm performing here is something that's really, really interesting to me, and I hope it is to you too. Um, so we've done our research, we've consulted the text, and what I'm trying to do is to piece together pieces of an ancient ecosystem that are long gone. These are rocks of 
Carboniferous Age. So later Paleozoic, they didn't come from Steel Creek Park, but they did come from nearby. Uh, these are rocks from Southwest Virginia and Northeast Tennessee that are part of our Steel Creek Park uh, Paleozoic and paleontological history. So what we're doing is starting with, with the rocks and we try to determine what they're made out of. These particular rocks are made out of calcium carbonate. That's important, calcium carbonate. We're gonna come back to that later. And right off the bat, I can see all sorts of fossils that are happening on here. I can see the bryozoans, these are ocean fossils. I can see the bryozoans, uh, probably Finistralina. Uh, I can find extinct bivalve mollusks and brachiopods and lots and lots and lots of crinoids. Uh, those are also called sea lilies, but they're not plants. They're a kind of animal related to starfish and sea cucumbers. So for somebody interested in prehistoric life, this is a great place to start. But I'm also curious, not just the fossils that are on the surface of this rock, I want to find out what fossils might be contained inside this rock. So if we want to find out what fossils are inside these rocks, we have a couple of ways of going about that. For one thing, we'll use our instruments like you see on the, the paleontology TV shows, not counting this one, where we'll kind of break these rocks open and we'll see what we can see. But what I'm really interested in, we have lots and lots of fossils of these invertebrates here. I want to know if there were any vertebrate animals, like fish, swimming around inside this ancient ocean that we have sedimentary rocks from. So, to do that, we're going to use a little bit about what we know of animal chemistry. Uh, so I mentioned that calcium carbonate earlier. That's the stuff that these rocks are made out of. That's also the stuff that most invertebrates make their hard little exoskeletons out of. Well, it just so happens that calcium carbonate is a pretty strong base. Uh, in fact, it's the primary ingredient in antacid tablets that you might take to neutralize some of your stomach acid that's causing you to feel uncomfortable. Uh, so this stuff, calcium carbonate, it's the main ingredient of limestone and dolomite. And calcium carbonate, because it's a base, dissolves readily in an acid. Well, vertebrates most of their hard parts, most of our hard parts, because we are vertebrates, uh, are not made out of calcium carbonate, especially the stuff like our teeth. It's made out of hydroxyapatite and all these other chemicals that don't dissolve in acid. So what we have here, if any of you are chemistry minded at home, is a 500 milliliter beaker filled with buffered 6% acetic acid. That's a bunch of science jargon for cleaning vinegar that you can buy in the grocery store. And what we're going to do is add our chunks of fossiliferous matrix into the beaker. And what you see is an immediate acid-base reaction. So what you can see happening right before your very eyes is that the calcium carbonate is dissolving away in the acidic vinegar. And so what's going to be left behind uh, is something called, in chemistry, a precipitate. The stuff that doesn't dissolve is going to be left behind uh, as a residue. We're going to screen those residues through some specialized scientific screens uh, dump the remainder out, neutralize the acid so it doesn't continue to eat away our potential fossils, and then what's left, we are going to look at under the microscope.
Well, thanks for coming along with me today as I brought you behind closed doors and introduce you to one of many research projects that we have here at the Nature Center ongoing. I'm gonna look through these screened precipitates over the next few weeks, but don't worry, I'll make sure to show you what we find. But whether it's to explore the park's Paleozoic prehistory or to take a hike or play golf, uh, or play on the playground, be sure to come to Steel Creek Park because here's where you can be the explorer.